Hi, today we are looking at how you can uh, read your face as a quick uh, check in just in the mirror <laughs> uh, to help you know or tap into what's happening on the internal side. So wouldn't it be great if we had a little zip, <laughs> we could just zip down any, any time we thought we were feeling a bit not great and see what was happening on the inside and then we would know what path to take as far as treating a root cause. Well, this is your closest thing. We don't have a zip. So this, this will allow you to check in uh, with the different zones that I'm gonna take you through. And tomorrow I'll be putting up the uh, PDF so that you have it as a cheat sheet. You can just look through and have a think as you go through these areas of something's coming up. Um, think what I call holistically. So this is what we're learning on this program is to think body, mentally, and so bodies physical, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And so part of that emotion side of it is tapping into your soul and heart and, and sort of what we're here for as a human. So I talked about that a little bit with the chakras and the traditional Chinese medicine, the TCM. So this is just topping, it's marrying those uh, modalities up, if you like, which not a lot of people do. It is around uh, face mapping, but um, it's not as common as I thought it would be. And I learned this oh, um, 25 years ago. <laughs> And it's so true. I practice it with everyone coming in for a facial. It's part of the way I relax the nervous system. So if you can't come in, obviously, for a facial, you want to have ways that you can do this as a quick flick um, and cheat sheet, basically. So, yes, here we are, face mapping. So this is what it looks like. And there's a few different variations of this. And I pretty much stick to this. Um, modality. I do change it a little bit just at the sides here. Sometimes it's a gallbladder that comes up rather than liver. So it's just a, a process of elimination. Obviously the liver and gallbladder are closely related and I find if your temples are coming up and you don't have a gallbladder that quite often will come up as liver. So if you do have a gallbladder then it's usually gallbladder over liver. So that's the only change. Um, and then I also use this area here as stomach. So I'll, I'll point you through that as we go. So let's start off. I've kind of divided it into three areas. So the top part of our face, the mid region, and then our lower. So if you just think of it as um, different zones, if you like, that we're gonna look at and it will make more sense when you're looking at the cheat sheet. So in the center there um, at the top, which is your small intestines, as opposed to your large intestines, which you'll notice is down through here. So if you've got really deep lines through this, what we call nasolabial fold, it's stuff that you are getting, um, you know, having colon issues around. So we'll go through that in a moment. But up here, small intestine. So that's part of your digestion uh, and processing of information side of things. So this, um, this works on your ability to absorb nutrients so on a physical perspective so you might be feeling more tired worn out you might have dull um, like a gray complexion across here this is also where we get a lot of pigmentation so some of it's sun damage <laughs> and then some of it's more internal inflammation if it's coming up and you know that you've been using your sunblock so small intestines um, can be that whole processing on a mental side of ideas, concepts, new things that you're taking on board. I found from the little hands-on treating that I'm doing at the moment, that the small intestines is coming up a lot for people in 2020 because we've got new things, new changes that we have to get our head around um, this part <laughs> all the time. So we're having to think a lot more clearly. As you go through hormonal changes, this can come up a lot more because uh, if you get rosacea or spots or rashes through this area, do look at your gut health um, because it's quite often the lining of that small intestine wall that is perhaps unbalanced with your um, microbiome. 
So looking at probiotics is a really good thing to just really get it into flow again. Uh, journaling is really good here because it helps you process what's kind of going on on your head. And if you're an overthinker, this area can come up a lot. Bladder, which is sort of this mid zone up here, including right up to the top, that can get inflamed, particularly with hormonal changes because we have changes to our actual uterus. So the size, or if we're starting to prolapse, <laughs> which can happen with age, then physically it's creating more inflammation. This is where the protandum is really good because it's working long-term on reducing inflammation. But short-term, if you're getting an emotional response to the bladder, that is also the allowing of things to pass through us. <laughs> and part of that is detoxification as well. So looking at a lot more water, making sure you haven't got any other drinks in there apart from water. So you might want to do like a four week period of just water, nothing else. So no caffeine, no alcohol, no uh, fizzy drinks or soda waters. Uh, so nothing fizzy at all and, and nothing else. So no, no herbal teas even, which is really tough but it makes a big difference through here. Usually I find if you drink a lot more water, a lot of these conditions go away and that, that touches on the physical side. And then it's going, okay, what's the emotional connection here? So bladder is the letting in. So sometimes we protect ourselves too much and letting out of emotions for safety and protection, uh, as well as that detoxification. Heart, which is at the sides here, it's also um, at the nose. So on that diagram, it shows it as upper lip, but it's actually the tip of the nose. So obviously from a physical perspective, this is more like your high blood pressure, um, you know, cholesterol, that type of thing. So looking at foods particularly, so staying away from all the things that we've talked about. So your trans fats, your processed foods. Sometimes this comes up a lot more if you've been partying a lot. <laughs> Um, and as your hormones change, your ability to absorb and use those fats that we would sometimes have in our diets that aren't so great into energy and that because of the liver loading becomes um, really hard. So it does flush out through here. So you've got, it's a really good indication that now is a good time to start looking at that diet again. Uh, and good fats going in rather than the takeaways and the trans fats. Uh, so obviously from an emotional side of things, it's love. And this is where we can be really hard on ourselves. We can um, beat ourselves up, be our harshest cr critic. And so this is sometimes a reminder that we need to just take a step back, uh, put things in perspective on ourselves um, and not give ourselves such a hard time. So making sure you're doing your self-care rituals, um, putting your oxygen mask on first before you, you know, worry about the team or worry about the family or anything. So more self-care time is your key thing here. So looking through into that mid part of the face, you've got your liver. So it's shown in the center right here. So you might find that again after partying or lots of social engagements and we're coming up to Christmas, so this is really relevant, um, you can break out or get one spot. It's also along the brows here. So obviously this is detoxification. Um, remembering that you may never have uh, suffered from you know, detoxing effects before, but as your hormones change, because of that changing estrogen, um, and it starts to bank up kind of thing. Remember I talked about it going through the trap door and it recycles and that's when it does the damage. That's when your liver's congested. So really get into a lot of greens, add a green powder to everything you're doing, either just have it as a shooter or put it in your smoothie. Um, increase your water, increase your B vitamins um, or make sure you're taking your multi. Um, milk thistle tea which is in your pro tandem keep that up and that will then help that processing of the physical side of things emotionally liver is anger 
So that can be anger at yourself or others. Now, this is a big one that comes up for menopausal or PMT time um, of the month, <laughs> which can last for a, a long time. Um, you can have those sort of either, either show up in two ways, hot flushes and heat, which as you know, as the closer you get to menopause, that's what's happening a lot. Earlier on though, you can get flashes of anger. So that's like all of a sudden you're going away really, you know, nice and handy. Then you get this mood swing, but it's like an instant, ah, <laughs> like the photo I use on all the end of the, all these slides. It's just like a crazy woman. So that is a sign that your liver is congested and you're angry about something. So while we need to process and physically deal with the liver, we also physically need to deal with the emotions. So some of that is triggered, obviously from a chemical um, component because you've got changing hormones, but there will always be a deep seated, it was already there beforehand, if you like. So journaling, I know I keep going on about this, <laughs> is really, really powerful in this um, scenario. So the liver and anger will keep resurfacing unless you are allowing a flow out of it. So physically writing on paper rather than typing uh, works better, has been found. So it actually, because you're physically moving your hand, I know physically typing's it's actually just different. There's been studies done. So physically writing with your hand allows the process of a unwinding and processing and flowing out of or detoxification of thoughts and emotions that are making you angry, resentful, angry at yourself, frustrated at yourself. Um, so it just can, can process. A really good essential oil to use here I've got a few of them down on that sheet, but one particularly for anger is ylang ylang. Works really well with this. And it's not a traditional detoxifying oil, but because it uh, works with that yin yang energy, it, it, so anger is a yang, <laughs> and then you need something that's a yin. So it softens and bring thing, brings things back into balance. So that's a really good oil if you're finding you know, you just can't, sometimes you just can't control it. So it's like, right, I'm just going to have that oil going either during the day or when I'm feeling like that, or I've had an explosion of that and I don't want it to happen again. Put those oils in the burner or tuck a little drop on, on under tissue um, and stick it on your bra. Uh, so kidneys, which is through here. Now, most women come to me and say, oh my goodness, I can't get rid of the bags on my, under my eyes. <laughs> This relates to kidneys. So the kidneys is where we store and hold on to water. So quite often, again, with menopause, it's um, the retaining of fluid or edema. So the body brushing works amazingly for this and also moving, making sure you're getting enough movement in your day. So as women, we need to do more now <laughs> than we did previously when we were younger because of those hormones changing and we actually need to do an hour a day I'm sorry to say <laughs> that is what you need now we need to do more to stay the same so kidneys actually can also be um, that not not wanting to let go of something so remember I talked about that transition from you know our reproductive years to now our wise woman years so sometimes we are holding on to that. We don't want to let it go because maybe we thought maybe we should have had another child or um, we really love our family life and we're not ready for the next phase. I'm, not, I'm too young for this. So all of those thoughts, again, journaling, some kind of processing, meditation works really well to get you to feel calmer around the transition. Um, this can also be obviously lack of sleep. <laughs> if you're not getting seven hours plus a night, then really look at bringing your sleep forward as in go to bed earlier. It doesn't matter what time you get up unless you're getting up at four in the morning kind of thing consistently, <clears throat> but going to bed earlier. And that I know is the time that we use as our downtime, but just start. I challenge you if, if sleep's still one of your things by now, 
that try and go to bed 20 minutes earlier for a week and see how you feel. If you feel no better, go back to how you were doing it. But I guarantee after <clears throat> seven days of doing 20 minutes earlier, you will now be in a better sleep pattern and you'll feel a lot more refreshed. And these circles here won't be so, um, or dark circles and bags won't be so pronounced. Water makes it obviously a massive difference. Um, the other thing I was going to say about that, oh, is sinus. So if you get a lot of hay fever and sinus, obviously that's swelling because you've got your sinuses literally under there. You can actually do pressure points. So you kind of pump through here gently and that will actually help that drainage go through. So rather than antihistamines initially, sometimes you need to, but if initially you can do that. If you do need to get antihistamines on the job, um, prime your body with vitamin C because vitamin C is a natural antihistamine and same as your fish oils. So you might want to up your Biomega and your vitamin C on its own at you know allergy times of the year because you'll get less inflammation. Now, um, it's not a quick fix. Obviously, your body's got to be primed. So if you start doing it, um, over the season, it probably won't get as bad. Now, how do you know? We don't know because we, we don't know what it would have been like beforehand. But I have seen many women over the years. So like they say, they start doing that and then they'll do it progressively for two or three years. They can honestly say, hey, this is less. I don't now suffer from hay fever and I always used to. Um, so it's worth, it's worth it. The stomach area, which is um, your cheeks, this is comes up particularly when we have our hormones changing around, PMT time um, and men coming into menopause. And it comes through, um, so Chinese medicine will be the heat. So it will get red, it will get rashy. Um, and that's a uh, correlation, obviously, to your stomach and digestion again. <clears throat> and also to um, food intolerances. So a lot of dairy and wheat will start irritating your gut. So as your hormones change, they say that you're less tolerant to, to gluten and also to carbohydrates. So your um, longer chain carbohydrates. So those are the things to start dipping down on and increasing the greens as you take away. Certainly the bread is a key thing, especially from a weight perspective at uh, this changing over time. Bread, try and get rid of. So uh, through here is definitely stomach. Probiotics, making sure you're getting enough fiber will also make a big difference to how this process is. Sometimes you're going to get that flare anyway, but just go, okay, that, that's my indication to get back on my probiotics. Stomach's also the churning or nervous tension that we get um, that can make us feel a bit nauseous and we either don't eat or we overeat. <laughs> so if you need to use oils for this balancing, peppermint is great and thyme, uh, tea tree, uh, all your cinnamon um, and herby spicy based oils, which aren't usually your common ones like caraway, fennel, juniper, those kind of ones are really good for digestion. And also they have that flip side of processing emotional things that come up. So nervous tension, all those kind of nervy things, remembering that there's that relationship between our gut and our brain. So if we're not working on that uh, emotional side as well as the physical we still don't get that serotonin produced and so our sleep kicks out of whack <laughs> so try and um, you know take a deep breath this is the time that the breathing makes a big difference take a deep breath put it in perspective right if you can to get it down or out of your head and then and then you can look at, look at your piece of paper and go, am I being realistic here? Or is this a, a mountain out of a molehill situation? No one needs to know. <laughs> just file it away in your, your brain's cabinet and go, you know what? I'm just overreacting right now. I need to take another breath. Go have some peppermint tea and calm down.
So, and eat something like protein because chances are you're not, you haven't been hungry and you've been avoiding food and you've gone too long and you can't think properly. So those kind of things make a big difference. The next area here, which is sort of here, it can come up on that bone, end of your cheekbone through here, but it's really through here. This is lungs. So Chinese medicine, this is um, grief. So grief doesn't have to mean someone's passed away or died, although obviously that does come up. It can be change. So I like to see it as change. So moving house, changing jobs, moving from one career to another, um, kids moving out of home, uh, you know, baby, grandchildren coming along unexpectedly. <laughs> Any kind of change, there can be this, what we physically do is we start to grind our teeth or create tension. So we might be clenching a little bit more. So there are some uh, pressure points right on. If you open and close your jaw, you'll find a little groove and you can actually push in through there. Now, if this area is tight, then that's a good indication that it's ten nervous tension uh, related to some kind of change. Again, journaling, meditation, walking with relaxing music on is going to really help. It's just to get that whole, <sighs> we're not breathing in and breathing out stuff that's going on in our life, okay, which is just called life. So... Um, that's what the lungs represent is our inhaling of new things um, and the letting go of things that don't serve us anymore. And we quite often don't tend to let go and which is why meditation and those diaphragmic breathing exercises are so good because it forces us to breathe out from that deeper, lower level of our stomach or lungs actually so so the diaphragm is actually moving what it's doing is actually it squeezes the stomach and the large intestines so you'll have more regular bowel movements so it works physically as well as um, neurotransmitters and emotionally too just allowing things to process and uh, move on and accept so that's your big acceptance uh, organ, if you like. We touched on large intestines a moment ago, and this is your colon area. So this is where you get a lot of your water absorption. So we actually take all our water that we drink straight into our bloodstream from our large intestines, not our stomach. So you want the wall to be really good because it can get clogged up and you have little villi that sit there and they attract all the gunk so that the gunk doesn't go through our intestine wall and, and create things like food allergies. <clears throat> so if you do have food sensitivities, you might be coming up with lines through here. So look at those food groups. Again, they're usually dairy. They can be corn, soy, wheat. Um, those are the most common, but they can be anything. So just reduce those and it may be for a four week period increase your water and increase your fiber now with fiber we talked about that before but it's the soluble and the insoluble fiber that makes a difference the soluble that's going to um, dissolve and it sticks to all the dirt if you like in those little villi so it sticks and attracts all the little um, dirty bits and then the insoluble picks it up out of the villi and then flushes it out. And that's what we want. So having the two is really important, not just one, which might stick to it and then just sits there. <laughs> it's not flushing out because it might be stuck in those little villi. So definitely that's uh, from a physical perspective, that's that area there. <clears throat> um, emotionally, it's again what we get bogged down with or... Um, what we get shitty about. <laughs> so another thing in Chinese medicine is there's always a saying for a different area. So remember I talked about the liver. You can, you've heard of the saying, we can be quite livid. So we're angry about something. That's the liver. See how that relation, the emotional relationship works. Same as colon. We get shitty about stuff. So if you're finding just emotionally, and we do get highs and lows of mood changes with with those flows and fluctuations of estrogen and progesterone, 
that you are getting shitty about you don't even know what, then physically look at your colon. So do a flush, do a detox, do a um, body brush, move a lot more, do your fiber, a lot more stalky, leafy, leafy greens, stalky, leafy greens. Um, and then look at, again, journaling, because it helps move it, because it may not be in the forefront of your mind, but once you start writing, you'll go, oh man, that girl, she really makes me mad. <laughs> and it'll be like, and why is that? I have no idea, but she just does. And then once you've got it out, she, no one needs to see it. And then it's like, oh, actually, that was a bit silly. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> And you'll find you'll have a much more free-flowing day in, in many areas, physically and emotionally. So that's a really good indication there. Um, the chin. So this whole area from the corners of our mouth down um, is hormonal. So male or female, doesn't matter, but it's reproductive area. So the center is um, ovaries and the side, sorry, the center is uterus and the sides are ovaries. So this can come up a lot. You'll notice teenagers get this area here, but it's because they've got that overproduction of extra hormones coming in as they've gone through puberty and the different phases of puberty. We also go through that, the different phases of coming into menopause. So all those premenstrual tension side of things as our hormones change. So you might get spots, you might get a rash, you might uh, get little bits of um, whiteheads underneath the skin and they don't kind of come up to anything. So it's just an uh, area to pay particular attention to and it's just to go, oh, actually, that's just my hormones. Let's just, you know, take a breath here. It's just my hormones. At least I know what it is. It's nothing else. I'm not losing my mind. <laughs> it, it's all good. So making sure you're using your licorice root tea <clears throat> works particularly well through here still do your rituals so use more mask uh, you can exfoliate more to make it go away uh, but as far as rashes and redness go it's more your internal things you can increase your fish oils so if you're finding you're really hormonal and it is quite rash and you can't get rid of stuff if you double dose your fish oils that actually helps a lot so you're getting in a lot more omega-3s um, and vitamin C on its own does another lot. Uh, do your fish oils first, and if it doesn't shift, then increase your vitamin C, and you might do like two weeks of it hardcore, uh, and then talk to me about dosages. You can have like up to 2,000 milligrams. It's quite a lot. You've just got to watch your gut health because it can make your gut a little bit more irritated. And so if you already have a sensitivity in the gut with the menopausal changes, um, you just want to you know, go easy. So fish oils first, increase, double it, two in the morning at two at night, and then um, look at vitamin C if it's not moving. So, and mask. You can use a mask just on this area here. You don't have to do your whole face and you can do it like three or four times a week. So every other day, just on that area, like a clay one or a charcoal one, and leave it on overnight. So put it on at night when you've done all the rest of your routine. Let it dry slightly, which it dries quite quickly. <clears throat> then hop into bed. By the time you're lying there, do your meditation and um, gratitudes. And then by the time you sort of roll over and go to sleep, it's set. It's not going to come off on the pillow slip. And you usually can't see it. In the morning when you're showering, if you're just like me and you go out the door quickly, you'll notice when you look in the mirror in the morning, usually you go into the bathroom, so you'll see it before you, and you can wash it off before you head out the door. So that's it. Um, use it as a guide. It's really true to what's going on emotionally. Just try it. And it's just a quicker way to get insights into why you're feeling the way that you are and then how to move forward from there. So you're not stuck there feeling negative and like a negative Nancy and blaming it on hormones, which it probably will be <laughs> at that time. But it's a good course of action to take as you um, progress. So yeah, use it mindfully. Think about those three different areas, physically, mentally, and emotionally what's going on. 
and just bring things into um, your awareness and into your rituals that you do so that next time something like that happens, you're quicker to identify it. And it's then slowing down that repeat patterning. So I think that's really key as we move into our wise years that we can just go, oh, actually, I've done that before. <laughs> Let's not go there and um, move forward uh, on a much more positive note. So enjoy and um, let me know how you go. This is an exciting, this is what everyone loves when I teach them how to do this. So enjoy, enjoy.